John chapter 10 verses 1 to 15. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. The wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. All right there, my name is Shepherdy McShepherd Face, and my parents named me Gur and Lush, but he was recently renamed for charity. <laughs> now, many people don't actually know what a shepherd does. Now, if I had a denarius for everyone who asked me what a shepherd does, well, currently I wouldn't have anything, but one day I'll have a denarius, <laughs> along with a proper West Country accent. Now my job, although it's really more than a job, it's a, it's a passion, a way of life, a, a commitment really, is to care for my sheep. Now it's not always easy mind, uh, sometimes sheep can be right daft, <laughs> but I do love them and I would do anything for them. Uh, now hopefully it won't come to this, but I would die to protect them if I needed to. Now to help me, we have two sheepdogs. One of them's here. The two sheepdogs are called Goodness and Mercy. They're gonna follow me all the days of my life, I can tell you, unless this one nibbles my headdress off. <laughs> now let me tell you about some stuff about shepherding that you might not know, unless you're a current or former theology lecturer based in Bristol. <laughs> but I don't know if they'll be watching this video, of course. First things first, I know each one of my sheep by their name, and they know my voice. When I call them, they come to me, and when we walk, I lead the way, they follow. Now, did you know that a sheep's nostrils, or the nose holes as a shepherds refer to them, are next door to its mouth, like we're right here? Now this means it can't drink rough water or the water will go up its nostrils and it will drown. Now, I look to think I'm a pretty good shepherd and I know that having a sheep drown is not a good thing. So I need to scout ahead and find still water, that's water that's not moving, so that my sheep can drink safely. Now in the Middle East here, which looks a bit like Bristol sometimes, there are no green fields. Just patches of green grass in the desert, and as a shepherd, I need to know where they are. Because sheep can get tired very quickly, especially when you have to go miles to find food, or, or drink, or luros, or 
antibacterial hand gel. <laughs> so I need to make sure I know when to give them a rest. And when I see them getting tired, I'll make them lie down in a green pasture and I'll watch over them while they lie down. Now, sheep can be quite nervous animals, but that's probably because there are animals like wolves and even sometimes lions trying to get them prowling about. So I need to make sure I protect them. I've got to be brave. I've got my rod and my staff. They comfort me, especially in the dead of night when all is calm and sometimes not always bright. Now, when my sheep are asleep in their pen, they actually lie across the entrance, a bit like a gate, I suppose. That way I can stop daft sheep wandering off, as well as stop anyone bad getting in. Now, I've actually got a bit of a catchphrase I use. If I see a wolf or a lion, I stand and I look at them and I say, You shall not pass! That's from a film I saw called Fellow Sheep of the Rings. <laughs> Oh, so that's a little bit of information about what a shepherd does. Now, now I'm going to hand back to somebody apparently called iGrove Studios. Uh, what a silly name to give your kid, eh? <laughs> uh, so we're going to hear from somebody who has an Ed. Oh, sorry. Somebody called Ed. Goodbye and God bless. Well, thank you so much, Janet and Alex, and thank you, Shepherdy Muck Shepherd Face. What a treat to have an authentic shepherd with a flawless West Country accent and his sheepdog with us today. My name's Ed, and our series Jesus Changes Everything is all about discovering who Jesus said he was. He made a number of I Am statements in John's Gospel, and, and these words of Jesus continue to reverberate through history. And, and for us in our COVID-19 affected world, discovering who Jesus is and what he does has the power to transform our lives. If you're joining us partway through this series, why not go to highgrove.church slash talks and you can catch up there on any ones that you've missed. Some great talks there too to watch. But our passage today in John chapter 10 comes hot on the heels of Jesus confronting the Pharisees, some of the religious leaders of the day, and, and them starting to get you know, really hot under the collar with his claims and his challenges to them. And Jesus carries on his teaching about himself and he contrasts himself, who, who he describes as the good shepherd, with, with what seems to be some pretty bad shepherds, shepherding on the part of the Pharisees and other religious leaders. Now, I was really grateful to hear from our guest shepherd because I don't know about you, but all this talk of sheep and shepherds in our passage today can, can feel a bit alien to me. You know, with the exception of the odd episode of Sean the Sheep, uh, you know, shepherds and sheep are not really part of my day-to-day -day experience. We don't have any pets. Um, we had a goldfish for a while. It was short-lived, and I mean that literally. It really didn't live very long at all. We have boxes of cereal that have lasted longer than that goldfish did. Many people watching might have a, a hamster or a cat or a rabbit or a guinea pig or, or maybe even chickens, but I wonder how many people watching today have their own sheep out back. And I know for certain today watching this, we, we've got a few teachers and home educators and accountants and doctors and dentists and students and cafe managers, but I wonder how many shepherds we have watching. Probably not many. If you're a shepherd, leave me a comment and set me straight. We'd love to hear from you. So when we read in, in the Bible of Jesus talking about sheep and shepherds, you know, we don't have those really familiar images in concept in our minds. But Jesus was so brilliant. He was an amazing teacher. He often used stories or, or used examples from everyday life to help put the point across. And this was no different. He was speaking right into the heart of everyday lives of the people who were listening to him. To his listeners, his mention of sheep and shepherds would have been really familiar to them. Many households would have had a few sheep and, and in the village, instead of a playground and a cash machine, there would have been a sheepfold, like a, a walled enclosure where the sheep would be at night. A shepherd was someone who cared for their flock of sheep during the day, during the night, during summer, during winter, during storms, during heat waves. A shepherd kept the sheep from wandering into danger. He made sure they got fed. 
He watched over lambs being born. He protected them from other animals and from thieves and robbers. He led them into new fields with lots of grass. A shepherd's job was sometimes dangerous and, and it was very demanding sometimes, but a lot of the time it was pretty ordinary and quiet. A lot of waiting around. Actually, sounds pretty idyllic to me. But a shepherd would know his sheep. He'd know which was which. He'd know which sheep was called Barbara and which was called William. Um, you know, it's got to be said, one thing I'm struggling with this whole kind of online church thing is that, you know, normally I'm kind of waiting at this point for the whole sort of wild, raucous laughter to die down and then I continue. But it's really weird uh, not having any response. So, you know, just likes and loves on Facebook, that'd be great. Shepherds would have their own calling sound and pet names that the sheep would recognise. So the shepherd would call the sheep and they would hear his voice and respond to it and they would follow the shepherd wherever he was going. Sometimes it's helpful to state the obvious, so I'm going to do that now. In this chapter, as Jesus talks, he's the shepherd and we are the sheep. So when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, it's a really, really powerful image. Jesus loves us. He cares for us. He provides for us. He protects us just like we're his sheep. He also knows us inside out. He knows your name. He knows what you're like. He, he gets you more than anyone else does. I don't know. I think he even laughs at my jokes. What do you reckon? And just like a shepherd, he, he leads us and he calls us to follow him and where he's going. He guides us and he leads us into really good things. But what we read in our passage today is that Jesus went as far as any shepherd can go to love and to care for his sheep. Jesus says in verse 15, I lay down my life for my sheep. Here's the good shepherd who loves his sheep so much that he will go as far as losing his own life to save them. Jesus makes it clear that not any old shepherd would do that for the sheep. Of course, Jesus is pointing to something that would happen not, not long after he was speaking. Jesus would choose to die as a good shepherd on a cross to save you and to save me from sin and death. But today we get two I am statements for the price of one because also in this same chapter of John, Jesus says this. I am the gate for the sheep. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, steal, kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. But hang on a minute. This might seem a bit confusing. We hear Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. And now he's saying, I'm the gate for the sheep. How can Jesus be both a shepherd and a gate at the same time? Well, our special guest shepherd this morning gave us the answer a bit earlier on. Um, at night, the shepherd himself would, would lie across the narrow opening of the sheepfold to make sure that anyone or anything trying to get in would have to come through him first. The only way into the safety and security of the sheepfold was through the shepherd. Jesus is saying to us in this passage, I am the gate. I am the shepherd you need to enter through to be saved. I am the doorway to knowing God. Believing and trusting in the shepherd, Jesus, is the way to a secure and firm future with God. But not only that, being part of the sheepfold doesn't mean we live, uh, live a, a caged in, boxed in, can't move, can't breathe life. Instead, it's, it's free range living. Being part of the sheepfold means we find meaning and purpose and fulfilment and peace and forgiveness. A rich and satisfying life, as Jesus says. Notice that Jesus says that the sheep can come in and go out freely, finding good pasture. In other words, new and exciting things to do, places to be. Life spent knowing and following Jesus is an adventure. There's freedom, there's life, and our eternal destiny is secure. And today I want to invite you to respond to the words of Jesus. I want to speak to two groups of people today. Firstly, if you're watching this and you're thinking, this sounds great, I, I don't know Jesus and I want to. I want to be one of those sheep that is looked after by the good shepherd. I want a rich and satisfying life and all that that means. If that's you, then we'd love to help you to get to know Jesus. One of the most famous passages in the Bible is just a few chapters earlier where Jesus says this, John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever and for the avoidance of doubt, that's anyone, that's everyone, that's me, that's you, we're, we're all included. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 
Choosing to believe in Jesus, to know him and to be led by him in your life is a choice to turn away from doing life on your own terms. It's a choice to stop wandering off from following every other kind of voice that promises so much satisfaction but delivers so little. The Bible calls living life on our own terms rather than on God's terms, sin. But Jesus offers forgiveness and a new free way of living and he gives us a gift. He gives us the Holy Spirit to help us live our lives. If you'd like to accept that gift today and to follow Jesus, I'd like to invite you to say a short prayer with me. So just echo these words, either out loud or or maybe quietly in your heart as I say them now. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong in my life. Please forgive me. I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If that's a a prayer that you just prayed with me, I'd love to have a chance to tell you a bit more about what to do next to get to know Jesus better. Drop me an email on hello at highgrove.church and I'll get straight back to you. Uh, My name's Ed if you missed that earlier on. Get in touch with me. But secondly, as we come to land, I want to speak to anyone who's watching this. And actually, you've been feeling a bit lost in your faith in this season. You know, for whatever reason, lockdown has meant that you've drifted away from God a bit. I want to invite you to return to embracing his care and his rest and his security. You know, for you, the main thing you need to do is just admit and acknowledge that you've wandered away. And say, Jesus, I'm coming back to you now. I know that you know me, but I want to know you in a closer way. Help me again to have a renewed sense of hope and purpose, to live my life in a different way. I want to listen out for your voice. And then there's some things you can do. It might be you can start to re-engage in church family a bit, even though it's mainly online at the moment. You could join a small group. It might be that picking up that daily habit of prayer again is important. It might be that choosing to spend a few minutes starting to read your Bible again is what you need to do right now. And I'd like to pray for you. Lord, I pray for anyone watching this now who, for whatever reason, has wandered away from the shepherd. Thank you, Lord, that as we turn our faces towards you, you welcome us back with open arms. Help us to know your love and your care. Thank you that you know all about us, where we've been and what we're like. We turn towards you now. Amen.